This is hydrogen tap. Finally stopped raining out here. It's been raining for like four days straight. What you're looking at is the focus unit in the Honda. And I'm doing an inspection now. I've got over a hundred miles on this tank. And what we're doing is expect an inspection to make sure everything is the same. I'm having some problems with the tight down here, which I'm going to have to find another type of seal, I know. And it's probably going to be a rubber cement-like seal that's removable. And the reason is, I, when this heats up, the seal gets more pliable. So these have to be tightened down. And uh, that is that is one of the problems I'm running into. But the cell is doing fine and I'll show you the mileage on the system. Uh, I've gotten a lot of email to see different sides of this so I'm going to show you that. Here's from another view and got surprisingly a lot of email on this bubbler that I have. So I'm going to do a little better explanation of it. This is the output port from the bubbler to the intake of the engine. And it's right on the top so it's pulling the hydrogen gas off the top of the bubbler. This This port right here, that's for the, it's coming from the hydrogen cell, actually has a rod, actually has a tube that goes from here all the way to the bottom of the bubbler. So it's misleading the way it looks. It's actually a tube coming from here, going to the bottom of the bubbler, even though it's on the top here. It's actually at the bottom. So then you have the gas pumping into the bottom of the bubbler and bubbling up to the top. Hopefully that'll explain or fix the confusion that everyone has. So again, there's the input. The hydrogen is going in here and there's a tube going from here to the bottom. I'm looking or inspecting the tubes that I have hooked to this to see if the heat has done anything to them and has not. Everything here seems to be intact. This is with the hundred or so mileage. And there's the other piece that's going to the this hose right here is the air, oxygen that's being pulled in by the engine. And there's my connection to it. So it's actually above the air filter, which I will move later, but right now for this test, this is just fine. It also helps trap anything that's coming in there if there is any problems. One of the things that's worthy of notation is that's the bubbler that you're looking at there. I haven't found it with that cap off yet, so that means there's been no flashbacks at all since I've been driving it. And there's another view of the cell and the tubes coming in. You can see that. And there's your another view of the cell. Remember there's a water out port on the bottom of that, a drain you could call it, and that's holding tight also. I'm using corks to do that. I will eventually have a hose coming from that to some other part of the undercarriage of the car. And there's a view of the 
green and red idiot lights, I call them. The green light means we have water in the cell, red light means we don't. I've had a couple of emails asking how I'm doing that, and the answer is a little trick I learned a while ago. I've got a small relay on there that's actually a 5 volt relay, not a 12 volt, or it's around 5 or 6 volts. So when you lower the voltage of the relay that you're putting in there, it takes much, much less current. And that is the reason I'm able to take that reading across the water sensor. View of the volt voltmeter that I have in the cab that's constantly monitoring the voltage on top of the battery or which really is what's called a voltage drop and you can see we're at 12 volts that's by even with operating the cell between 15 and 30 amps actually I haven't gotten up to 30 amps yet A cautious view of the amp meter that I'm using to measure the amps when the cell's on. And as long as that's up and down with the car off, I'm in good shape. So what we're going to do now is take a look at our reading mileage-wise. And compare that to what we had before. We're still running on that tank. And we'll look up here. There's the odometer that I actually set back so we don't have to do any figuring. So we've run 123 miles on this. And I'm going to turn over the engine in just a second. Okay, I've got the engine on and uh, we're doing an idle right now. And you can see the the voltmeter is up to 14 volts. That's our alternator putting it out with the cell running. And we'll take a look here at our amp meter. And you can see we're about not quite 15 amps. I've had a lot of people reading this at different readings. Uh, you're welcome to read it any way you want. You see the gauge, that's where we're at. That's with the cell operating in an idle. Okay, we're still idling and you can see we're doing about 14 volts up there. And there's our amp meter. There's a good look at the hydrogen bubbles coming up. This is from the bubbler. As you can see, there's a lot of them coming in there. There's a good view. This kind of bugs me, these things get loose too easy, that means this ring here I'm using as a seal is wrong. I'm going to have to come up with another type seal. And that's only because it just flattens out. What you're looking at here is the water sensor. <laughs> 